Hey guys, it's Chris, and they finally dropped another Game of Thrones Season 7 trailer, a full-length trailer, and I'm super excited about this damn trailer because they finally dropped some new footage, something besides Danny coming to Dragonstone in her little rowboat from various damn angles. But anyway, let's jump right in. I'm going to watch it with you guys as usual and pause it frame by frame and see if we can break down and see what's going on and see if there's some stuff we missed. So let's jump right into Game of Thrones Season 7, Winter is Here. <laughs> Okay, so we have Littlefinger talking to Sansa here, doing a voiceover as Sansa walks away from the weirwood tree at Winterfell. This is obviously going to be in the Godswood at Winterfell. And she's walking away here. She looks to be pretty satisfied. So I'm wondering here if this could be her walking away from Littlefinger's body, perhaps after the drama goes down and she finally dispatches him, whether she does it herself or has Arya or Brienne do it. Whether she does it herself or has Arya or Brienne do it this is another conversation. And as a matter of fact, we talked about that in last week's Side Effect podcast. But the point being here is she looks fairly satisfied here. Perhaps she's got a plan. Perhaps she just, you know, finished the plan. And she slightly glances back here as if she's walking away from something. Perhaps a body? Perhaps Littlefinger's dead ass laid in the snow. Your mind. And then we see the same shot we saw in the previous trailer with the gate at Castle Black opening. And what we have here is the gate actually opening for Bran and Mira. So this is a clear shot here at the wall at Castle Black. And this is kind of what I guess was going on in the previous trailer as well as the pictures released. We see the gate opening here and we see Mira and Bran actually standing outside of the wall. In the previous pictures that were released where Mira is pulling Bran as usual because he can never warg anything to pull the damn card himself. I said I thought Mira was looking up so I kind of imagined her looking up at the wall as they got closer to it. And of course the Night's Watch likely spots them and realizes they're people and not whites or white walkers and opens the gate for them. So Bran is going back through the wall here and if you remember he is marked once he passes through this wall. He's got to make that decision. The magic is gone. And next here we have a shot of John here, obviously north of the wall with the ranging party going to look for a white or white walker, whatever, to prove to everyone in the south that the threat is real. I really can't see who's in this picture here, but more than likely this is going to be Tormund and Davos, Gendry and the whole party we know that's going north to find a white apparently. So it's hard to say what John's looking at here. Obviously he's looking at something that's concerning, so I'm going to guess he's about to do some damn battle. All right, in our next shot here, we have somebody coming through King's Landing. Obviously, this is King's Landing. Somebody's being led by gold cloaks here. We see the Lannister lions on the wall. We see the Red Keep in the background. So I'm going to guess here that this is Euron showing up at King's Landing, going to the Red Keep to offer Cersei his alliance and his big cock. And then we have a shot of Cersei here and almost confirms that she's turning around as if being told, hey, somebody's here to see you. And it looks to be the damn Greyjoys by their sigil. But Cersei will have a lot of suitors here now that she's Queen of the Seven Kingdoms. Although I don't see how people really support her. I guess she's going to lie and say that somebody else, you know, blew up the entire Sept of Baelor and try to blame it on the Tyrells, for example. And that's what probably justifies her going to war to take Highgarden, which I think she's going to do this season. She's going to need all the political alliances she can get. And I think she'll definitely hear Euron out, but I don't think she'll actually follow through with any kind of marriage. And here we see another shot of Danny at Dragonstone rubbing her hand across the table. This is likely when she first gets in this room and sees the table map carved by Aegon the Conqueror, her ancestor. And this is definitely going to be a parallel with that. So again, she's getting there for the first time. She's taking this all in. Remember, she was born at Dragonstone, born during the worst storm in history, hence the name Daenerys Stormborn. And she's never touched the ground here. So it's going to be super emotional for her and for a lot of book readers and fans for her to finally get back to Westeros. And next we have a shot here on the beach, what looks to be like on Dragonstone. This is some party arriving, probably to see Danny. So I'm going to imagine that this is either Danny arriving and this is just a camera angle from them coming on the shore for the first time, or this is perhaps somebody else coming to see Danny, perhaps John and his party for the first time. But definitely going on at Dragonstone here, you can tell by the weather and the rocks and the waves and all that stuff, and obviously the sandy beach that we see Danny get off on the boat from all the previous trailers and pictures released when she touches the sand for the first time. 
So I'm going to guess here this is probably a party arriving to see her. And the most important party coming this year is obviously John and his party from the north to tell Danny about the true threat coming from north of the wall. Next we have a shot of Arya and this is likely her traveling north again. This is the same thing we saw in the very first images released months and months ago of Game of Thrones Season 7. And this looks to be Arya heading to the north. She is looking at something here on the horizon. So I'm going to guess this is when she first sees Winterfell over the hill somewhere because she hadn't seen home in a long, long time. Next we have a shot of Jamie here and I'm going to guess this is going to be at Highgarden. I do think the Lannisters will attack Highgarden in Season 7 and I do think they probably succeed in taking that castle before they head back somewhere and Danny meets them in the open field and we're going to see Field of Fire 2.0. But you can see here there is a dead body laying down here next to this wall as Jamie walks by. But it doesn't look like armor here. It looks like a steward perhaps at High Garden. So I'm going to guess this is Jamie walking in High Garden after they just seize the castle because I do think that Cersei will send the Lannister forces and Jamie will follow suit one last time because Lady Elena Tyrell, the Queen of Thorns, is definitely her enemy and she is now conspiring with, of course, Danny and the Sand Snakes, Dorne, and all that good stuff to go against Cersei. And Cersei needs some damn money because the gold mines are dry. Another shot of Littlefinger creeping, and this is likely going to be the Crypts of Winterfell before Jon choke slams his ass. For centuries, our families fought together. In our next shot, we have Danny walking across the beach of Dragonstone, likely for the first time, headed up to the actual castle. And then we have an interior shot of Danny coming into Dragonstone, and I kind of called this in the last little set of pictures that were released when I did a little picture video last week. She is looking up at a Baratheon sigil here, and it's particularly the one that Stannis used because it has the Heart of Fire, which is the Lord of Light, and the Baratheon stag in the middle of it. So this looks to be her jerking down the last Baratheon sigil that's left in Dragonstone because of course Dragonstone is a Baratheon holdover and that's likely what we saw on the floor before in that previous picture I talked about in last week's video. Now what's cool about this scene as well is John's giving his voiceover here and during this voiceover John is saying that our families used to work together so likely when he gives this speech he's actually at Winterfell before he leaves Winterfell to head to Dragonstone to see Danny but they're playing this over the Danny scenes as if to say John is coming to see her and we need to fight together our families Targaryen and Stark and of course John is both and that's what it's kind of pointing to here as far as the trailer goes but I'm going to guess that the speech he's actually giving is in the Great Hall at Winterfell right before he leaves and this is likely referring to the Karstarks and Umbers because remember there's going to be a slight issue there they did name him King of the North but they did not answer the call as Lady Mormont said last year when he went to battle so there's going to be an issue there Sans is going to want to punish them John's going to look to be the conciliator and bring everybody together so likely that speech is taking place in the Great Hall at Winterfell right before he goes to see this Dragon Queen. And next we have a badass shot of the dragons at Dragonstone here, flying up to the Dragonstone for the first time, more than likely. This is kind of symbolizing the Targaryens coming back to Westeros, a parallel, a repeat of history, so to speak, as Aegon the Conqueror arrived at Westeros and basically started the Targaryen dynasty with his sister wives and his dragons. So this is just a straight up badass scene here, as dragons are coming back to Westeros for the first time in 150 years. Together. So then we have a little montage of Tyrion here. This is likely the same spot where Tyrion's on the cliff watching the dragons at Dragonstone. And it makes you question what the hell he's doing way out there in the fields. It's not really close to the castle. He's looking over the cliff here. He definitely looks worried, just like in the first trailer. So what the hell's going on with Tyrion here? And why the hell is he out there in this random area at Dragonstone watching these dragons over the cliff? We need to do the same. And then we get a shot of Theon, which is the same shot from the previous trailer when he's on this battle, likely with the Greyjoys, likely battling Euron. And then a shot of Grey Worm here in his helmet as they approach either the shore or perhaps this little cave or cavern here on the water. Or perhaps this is actually after they have arrived and Danny sends him to look for something in particular. Perhaps this is after John comes down and tells her about Dragonglass. We did see that scene yesterday from the Spanish trailer. Danny is going through a cavern with a torch and there was definitely Dragonglass in that scene. So I think this could be Grey Worm actually looking for that particular cavern. John's going to inform Danny when he does meet her that Stannis told her there were shit tons of Dragonglass on Dragonstone and they'll need that shit in the wars to come. Or this could be Grey Worm simply infiltrating Castle Rock. Because the enemy is real. Next we see a shot of Podrick and Brienne in Winterfell. Pretty cool to see old Podrick Payne again here in whatever magical weapon he's carrying around. I'm really curious to see his storyline here. Will he become a knight this season? Although Brienne can't knight him, perhaps somebody else will. And Brienne can become a knight as well officially. So we will definitely see them training at Winterfell for sure. We saw that in the Spanish trailer release yesterday from HBO Spain. 
So that looks to be pretty damn cool. And I'm looking forward to see what Podrick and Brienne's storylines are. But they do look pretty damn formal here in this picture. So I'm wondering what this is. This looks to be maybe somebody arriving at Winterfell. Or perhaps this is when Jon leaves Winterfell. And this is kind of a formal thing here. Because they definitely look dressed up. And you got Brienne here in northern damn clothing here. You can see the straps there and the fur on her shoulders. She looks like a damn northerner now. And of course she is sworn to Sansa to be her right hand lady so to speak. So that's pretty damn cool to see Brienne dressed up in northern damn clothing. And I hope Pod, I hope Pod makes it this year. I really do. Poor Pod. We got to find out what the hell happened in that brothel. And we see a quick shot of the Hound here. Now this is going to be up north, north of the wall more than likely. You can clearly see he's in a fight here in the background. It's all white. There's snow everywhere. This is going to be in the party north of the wall. So this is going to be very, very cool to finally see all these characters come together and fight on the same page. And that's what John's trying to do as the conciliator, Jaehaerys the Third. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I don't really know his name. I'm just guessing, but I would really like it to be Eamon. We see a member of the Unsullied here getting shot and taken down. This is likely going to be there in the fight with the Lannisters. This is more than likely going to be at Casterly Rock because we do know that the Unsullied are going to attack the Lannisters at Casterly Rock more than likely, and the Dothraki are going to attack the Lannisters in the south more than likely near High Garden. So this could be either or. There may be split up troops. We have no idea. But in the next shot, we do definitely see the Dothraki fighting the Lannisters here, as this is a Dothraki screamer jumping into some Lannister shields. They give zero fucks. They don't care about walls of shields. They're going through that shit regardless, and they're going to break them down. The Lannisters are not prepared to fight somebody like the Dothraki, even though they don't have the technology like armor and shields and all that because they don't believe in it. They just go buck wild and kill everybody they can, so they don't give a damn about your damn formations and your damn shield walls. We see a quick shot here of the sea battle, of course, and this is going to be Euron versus the Greyjoys, I guess. And this is likely when Euron is going to perhaps capture Yara Greyjoy and Theon's going to escape once again and then feel damn bad about it. We did see those shots previously in previous teaser releases of pictures that Theon's going to get his ass whooped and it's more than likely because he somehow left Yara behind, although more than likely it's probably not his fault this time. And speaking of this little shot here, this definitely looks like Yara as she's battling on this ship as she jumps down to stab somebody in the face. Although it's really hard to tell, she moves pretty quickly, or he. But then again, this could be Yara jumping down as she battles Euron and her troops. But I'm going to guess this is not going to end well for her, only because of some previous set pictures where she is in King's Landing with Euron. In the next shot, we see Jamie and Bronn on their horses as the Lannister bowmen here take aim at something. And this is likely going to be the Dothraki before they reach them in this same battle. So again, this is going to be probably the battle around High Garden or wherever this is going to be. Somewhere in the south, obviously, because of the background here and the terrain. But this is going to be Lannister soldiers as they aim at the Dothraki horde. So this is going to be a cool-ass battle before Danny arrives and just straight burns the shit out of everybody. They have strategy, they have tactics, and the Dothraki, of course, not that they're not disciplined necessarily, but they definitely don't have the same military style tactics because they do just use their numbers as a horde and go in and mow down everybody. As Robert said back in season one, anybody will be a fool to meet Dothraki in the open field. Kind of your standard army with military tactics, with archers, with shields, with armor, knights, etc. against the Dothraki horde who basically just run over everybody and kill everybody in their damn path. This is going to be fun. Now this little sequence here is probably my favorite of this entire trailer. We see a shit ton of ravens here or crows. This is definitely not just some random shot of birds flying. This is going to be ravens controlled by Bran as he spies on the Night King from Winterfell. And as a matter of fact, in this shot, we see the Night King looking up as if he's seeing the ravens. He knows what's going on, so he knows he's being spied upon here. And this is going to be Bran because in the very next shot, we see Bran warging here. We see the whites of his eyes, obviously, in his warging state. So he is going to be in the God's Wood. And we see in this next shot that he's actually in a damn wheelchair. This is likely him spying on the Night King, trying to find out what's going on because he did come through the wall at this point. So he probably knows that the magical spell is broken. So his job is to keep an eye on the Night King while Jon goes and recruits Danny and her dragons. And this is likely what Bran's doing here. Now, I know a lot of people tweeted me this morning, Facebook me messages and all that kind of stuff. They want to know who the hell this guy is in the shot. And a lot of people thought this could be Helen Reed. And it's certainly possible, but it's really hard to tell. But I think more than likely, just by the robes here, the black robes, and this balding head we see, this is more than likely Maester Walken. Remember, he was the new Maester at Winterfell. He's the one that actually delivered the baby brother of Ramsay Bolton last year, who, of course, he had killed along with Fat Walda. So this is more than likely Maester Walken. It only makes sense because he is going to be with Bran. He's going to be helping him out. Obviously, there is no more Hodor. 
It's hard to say what Mira is going to do, although I don't think she just goes home and disappears forever, although she may try to go home and find her father temporarily. But it would make sense that it's the maester here, because remember, maesters are not sworn to the family, they're sworn to the castle. So it doesn't matter who the lords are of the castle, the maesters stay loyal to the castle itself. So whatever family's there, it doesn't matter. They serve whoever's there, it doesn't matter what their last name is. And at least he has a damn wheelchair now to get around instead of that damn sled. But this has got to be my favorite part of this damn trailer because I love the stuff with Bran. I love seeing the visions and the warging. And I'm really, really curious to see how powerful Bran's going to be because it looks like in this shot at least, he is controlling multiple ravens, not just one animal at a time. So he's going to be pretty damn powerful. It's always been real. And then we see old Beric Dondarrion and his flaming sword. Now this is going to be pretty damn badass. He's going to be up north of the wall here. Likely in the same scene with the hound that we just saw previously. And he lights his damn sword up. Now of course in the damn show, he does it with his blood. He does know some stuff from the Lord of Light because he is essentially a minor sorcerer just like Melisandre. But in the books, he uses wildfire to actually light his sword up. But of course, it's just showing that he has some kind of magical ability in the show. Because of course, he did get resurrected six times by Thoris of Mir. But the question is, does Thoris of Mir have any power? Or is there something special about Beric Dondarrion? So this is a badass shot. It's going to be north of the wall with John, Davos, Tormund, etc. And I'm really looking forward to see what happens up there. Although based on the books alone, I do worry about what the hell is going to happen to Thoros and Beric. And in our next shot, we see the fleet of Euron Greyjoy heading towards King's Landing. This is going to be obviously the Greyjoys here. We can see their sigil on their sails, and we can see the ship Silence here heading towards the Red Keep and King's Landing because he has these side sails here. So it looks like he found all that wood on the Iron Islands to build his thousand ships. But I have no idea where they found all those damn trees on the Iron Islands. We have some more shots of the Unsullied in battle at Castle Rock, more than likely. Some say this could be Lannisport, but I think it's probably more than likely Castle Rock. But in the next scene here, where we see the Unsullied coming through these doors. It's very, very interesting here because we just saw that previous shot of Danny ripping down the sigil of House Baratheon, specifically Stannis Baratheon, since you have the Lord of Light's flaming heart around the stag. These doors look very similar to where she was standing earlier when she ripped down that sigil. So this actually could be a quick shot of them actually taking over Dragonstone because I said in the last trailer breakdown, there should be Baratheon holdovers there, although the show essentially forgot about them. So they should at least show a couple scenes here of them actually taking the castle of Dragonstone because they're just not going to show up and the castle stands there empty. Another shot of Danny here at Dragonstone, perhaps looking over some kind of balcony as she just arrived there more than likely, or she's been there for a little while and she's made her battle plans. And maybe she's being told here that somebody is here to see you and that could be Jon Snow. And in our next shot here, we see Jamie riding across a field here. This is going to be likely the same battle with the Dothraki. But the very cool thing here is you see a lot of damn fire everywhere. Everything is on fire. Now this could be from catapults or something like that during the battle. But remember here, look what's actually burning. This is not anything of the Dothraki's burning because the Dothraki don't have wagons. They don't have catapults. They don't have any shit like that. They only ride into battle on their horses. So everything on fire belongs to the Lannisters. So that certainly points to a damn dragon being there. So we're definitely going to see Drogon and Danny riding into battle like we saw in the previous teaser. And she's going to burn shit up. So this is going to be filled fire 2.0 if she in fact uses all three dragons and of course we have some more battle porn here we have the explosion on the ship here during the sea battle this is going to be Greyjoy versus Greyjoy we have a quick shot here of Tormund here in battle this is going to be the same scene as the hound we saw previously as well as Beric Dondarrion I can't imagine there's going to be any more wildlings left north of the wall they all got turned essentially at hard home so I think this is going to be obviously whites they're fighting here. Although it's hard to tell, there could be some band of wildlings left, but I don't think there would be. And I don't think they'll necessarily fight them. I think they'll try to recruit them. So I definitely think this is going to be whites they're fighting. And of course, the White Walkers. And we have another badass shot here of the battle with the Dothraki against the Lannisters more than likely. And we see Drogon here. And yes, this looks to be a little bit lighter than Drogon, but if you look here closely, you can see Danny on the back of him and she looks tiny as hell. These dragons are fucking huge. So this is going to be a badass scene. Could you imagine the Lannister soldiers when they see a dragon coming their way? They heard about it. They heard about it growing up that there used to be dragons in the world. Half of them probably don't believe it, but they're damn sure going to believe it this time. And somebody's going to get their ass burnt the hell up. We see Theon and Yara here in a very quick scene, likely during the sea battle. It looks to be here they don't have any armor on, so it looks to be they're probably taken by surprise here as they see a ball of fire go overhead, and this is like the Euron attacking the ship, so them not having any armor on looks to be like they possibly were taken by surprise here. So this is definitely going to be a Greyjoy versus Greyjoy fight here, because again, Euron somehow found wood on the Iron Islands to build a thousand damn ships. 
A few more shots here of the Lannisters getting ready to go to battle with the Dothraki. But again, they're going to line up with their shields and they're going to try to form a wall here using their military tactics. And the Dothraki aren't going to give a fuck and they're going to march right through that. Although a few will die in the process. So they'll likely reach the Lannister lines in combat before the dragon does. Or perhaps the dragon shows up a little bit later. Perhaps there's a second wave coming in. Because at first you would think if they saw a damn dragon, that these motherfuckers would start running the other damn way. And we see our first real clear shot of John and his company north of the wall with a bunch of damn whites surrounding him on some kind of rock here. So this is going to be a hell of a battle here. They're going to be surrounded. So this is going to be a dire situation and probably going to need somebody to come in and give them a hand. A little more Grey Worm and Masande action. They're going to snuggle a bit. We see a quick shot of Tyrion turning around here and Tyrion is in his little leather tunic but then we see a quick shot of what's going to be the dragon pit and somebody drawing their sword here. It's really hard to tell who the hell this is by the looks of the hair though it looks like it could be Bronn. This is definitely not the mountain because the mountain is in his new armor. It also could be the hound if the hound is with this party that goes and meets Cersei at the dragon pit in King's Landing. You do have to remember that the dragon pit is in fact in King's Landing. This is where the Targaryens used to keep their dragons and there's going to be apparently a meeting there between Cersei, Danny, John, and all the various parties about getting together and fighting the true war to come. But also after their little mission up north to capture a white and bring it back to show Cersei and Danny, this could be somebody actually ordered to kill it and show that it still moves. So it really may not be a fight here as far as the people involved in this little meeting, but it could be somebody trying to kill the white to show that the damn thing doesn't stop until you basically destroy it. So ultimately it may not matter who the hell this actually is because they probably are trying to kill a white here and not trying to kill each other. We see a quick shot of John and Davos, and this is going to be on Dragonstone as they go to meet Danny for the first time. You can see John's armor here with the two Stark direwolves on his breastplate. This is from the previous teaser photos that were released, and I think in that initial meeting, it is going to be John and Davos. They come up on the beach, and Tyrion greets them first, and then they are brought before the Queen Daenerys. So this is going to be John and Davos meeting Danny for the first time. And then we have a really cool shot here of a battle with a White Walker, and it looks to be like it's John again. So John may kill his second White Walker here. Or perhaps he gets knocked on his ass somehow and gets in a lot of trouble. We don't really know. But the point being here is the White Walkers are going to be involved. It's not going to be just Whites. We're definitely going to see some White Walker action. And you would hope that we certainly would this season, even though I don't think the wall comes down to the end of the season. But this entire theme of all these little teasers and trailers they've been dropping, including the Season 7 poster, is the Night King and the whole fact that Winter is here, which is the actual name of this damn trailer. But my question here would be, is why is this White Walker attacking when he knows he has a Valyrian steel sword? I guess he just don't give a damn. He's going to try to kill him anyway. Perhaps he thinks he's a better swordsman. I don't know, but the point being that the Night King knows now that they do have Valyrian steel or some kind of special metal if he is aware of prophecy that can kill White Walkers, but they're going to try to attack them anyway. I guess they really have no choice. And speaking of Field of Fire 2.0, here we have people riding through some damn flames. And I'm going to guess here this is going to be at the Field of Fire 2.0 I keep talking about around High Garden somewhere with the Lannisters versus the Dothraki and of course Danny flies in on Drogon. We'll see if they have the other dragons there, Basiria and Rhaegal. We'll see if they show up as well. But the point being here, this is going to be a badass battle scene with an actual dragon involved over land and Drogon likes his people and horses extra crispy. And here we have a shot of what looks to be Theon Greyjoy on the beach somewhere. Perhaps this is at Dragonstone, perhaps the Iron Islands, but this looks to be Theon here dropping to one knee like he's about to faint or pass out, or perhaps he's already got his ass beaten here because there were released photos of the Iron Board kind of beating Theon's ass, his own damn people. So I'm not really sure what's going on here, but he looks like he's dropping to one knee like he wants to go out to the ocean and drown himself. So this kind of confirms to me if this is Theon because it is kind of hard to tell here from this shot. It's so quick. The Yara does in fact get captured by Euron, Theon somehow gets away, and he's now blaming himself. Poor damn Theon. You know, he's gone through so damn much and redeemed himself so much, this motherfucker can't catch a break. The next shot looks like part of the sea battle. Perhaps this is Euron himself killing somebody. You can tell this is part of the sea battle because of the ship here. You can see the side sail here, so this is likely going to be on the ship Silence or one of the other Greyjoy ships, perhaps. I'm sure they all have side sails, so everyone doesn't have to be the Silence necessarily. But it looks like to be actually Euron himself, but it's very, very hard to tell because the scene is so quick. And in our next scene here, we have a cool shot of Danny on top of Drogon as he's crawling towards somebody and then baring his damn teeth. This could be at the very same battle we're talking about with the Lannisters. But if you look at the background here, this looks to be actually Dragonstone. That looks to be the castle right behind her, and he is approaching somebody. So it's hard to say what this is, but I'm going to guess here that this may be the first time that Jon and Davos meet the damn dragons. 
I think John has to meet the dragons here and they have to kind of sense him and smell him and realize with their magical link, because he is half Targaryen, they're going to sense that Valyrian blood. And this is going to be a big clue for us because John's not going to find out his parentage immediately. We're going to know it. They're going to tease it for sure. So I'm going to guess here, just because this is on Dragonstone, or at least it looks to be, that this is Danny when she goes and gets the dragons for the first time to meet John and Davos for whatever reason. So I think this is going to be another tease for us when John meets the dragons for the first time and they don't immediately kill him and they seem to like him. And that's going to puzzle Danny. Of course, John won't know anything about that unless he knows his Targaryen history. But if I'm right here, this is going to be very, very cool to have Drogon and the dragons and Danny for that matter meet John for the first time and see how the dragons react to him in the catacombs at Marine. And it's going to be a similar thing, I think. We're going to get little more hints of Targaryen blood or Valyrian blood when they meet Jon for the first time and they don't burn his ass alive. And there in the next little sequence of this teaser, we see various shots of people in the north. This is going to be Jon and his party north of the wall. As we hear Sansa repeat this very cool line from what Ned used to tell Arya and them about how the pack survives but the lone wolf dies. She says this. When the snows fall, and the white winds blow. The lone wolf dies, but the pack survives. So that's very, very cool. It was kind of a build up here. And then we see the first shot coming out of that little diatribe by Sansa. And it's going to be John killing a white here. This is definitely going to be a white. I don't think, like I said before, there's going to be any wildlings left up north and he's killing somebody here. But what's really interesting here, there's not a pack of whites on him. It seems to be one at a time. So I think this is going to be John surrounded up north by a pack of whites. The white walkers are probably there and watching and they're going to test him or something like that because they're sending one at a time. We know how the whites work typically we've seen in past seasons. They just bum rush everybody at the same damn time. But John is actually killing one at a time here. So this might be a little test between him and the Night King. And there you have it guys. That's all we have for the second teaser trailer. I think this trailer was pretty damn badass. It went over a lot of different stuff. We got some new shots finally. We got to see the Hound up north. We got to see Beric Dondarrion with his flaming sword. We got to see a little more of this trip up north with Jon and his crew. We got to see Drogon going into battle with Danny riding him in Field of Fire 2.0 is what I'm calling it. We got a couple shots of King's Landing as far as Euron goes. Him approaching King's Landing and somebody going up to meet Cersei, likely Euron. So this trailer was very, very badass and I'm very, very excited to see there's actually going to be some White Walker action as well as some dragon action. So this is what they've been hinting at as far as the whole Night King thing with all these teasers and trailers and posters. So really, really looking forward to this. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you hyped for season seven yet? This is the baddest trailer I've seen in a while. Very, very excited about it. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if I missed anything and just be sure to let me know what you think about the trailer in general and does this pump you up for Game of Thrones season seven. Anyway, as usual, thank you for all the support, especially to you guys on Patreon, and I appreciate the support from everybody out there in YouTube land. Thanks for all the likes, shares, subscriptions, all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. And if you're new here to Smokestream, be sure to subscribe to get everything, and be sure to click that damn notification bell so you're notified when I drop a new damn video. And also, really quickly, guys, just to let you guys know, I mentioned it in a live stream last week. We do have smoke screen hats now available in the Teespring store. So if you wear hats like I do, they are now available with the smoke screen logo. So check the link in the description below. So anyway, thanks again. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.